Welcome back. Breaking news this morning from Texas Governor Greg Abbott responding to a federal appeals court directing Texas to remove the buoys or the barriers set up in the Rio Grande to stem the flow of illegals flooding into the state via the open border. The governor told me he is not backing down and he will appeal that, uh, even up all the way to the Supreme Court if need be. The impact of Joe Biden's border crisis, of course, felt in cities and states across the country. In Arizona this weekend, the most encounters ever seen. This tweet from the Tucson sector chief, 17,500 encounters in a single week. That's the highest the sector has ever seen. That's 2,500 people a day. Tomorrow, Customs and Border Protection said to close the border crossing station in Lukeville, Arizona, to allow agents to be shifted elsewhere along the border to deal with the surge of migrants crossing illegally into America. Joining me right now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is Arizona Republican Senate candidate Carrie Lake. Carrie, good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Assess what's happening in Arizona for us. Greg Abbott told us it's now the tip of the spear. The worst, the worst border in the whole country is the, in Arizona, and it's the Tucson sector. Those numbers are shocking, especially when you consider what they were a few years ago, where we barely had anybody coming across illegally under a great policy that President Trump had put in. And now we're seeing just one day, one morning, Maria, 950 people poured across in the Tucson sector in one morning, and 71% were just adults. This is not families coming across, and we do have those, but the more, majority of these people are fighting age men. We are watching as we're being invaded, and we're seeing a foreign army basically pour across our border. We talk a lot about Biden inflation. We have a Biden invasion happening on the border in Arizona, and it seems like we're not getting any attention from the White House, from D.C., we need to get this border wall completed. Oh, and this just this week, just this week, Maria, and remember last time I was on, I was talking about how the Biden administration had welded open the gates so people could pour in. Yeah. Just this week, we saw cartel members moving in heavy equipment and literally chopping down parts of the wall. And a reporter was videotaping it, and they were blowing her kisses and laughing. This is what's happening. The, the cartels own and control our southern border. And this is really, in my opinion, an act of war. This is incredible that we're not seeing any response from the Biden White House. They will not return to the Trump policies. Can you give us a sense of life in Arizona as a result of this? Have the neighborhoods been affected right by that border? Oh, absolutely. A little town called Sassabee, which is right on the Arizona-Mexico border, used to have a population of 2,000. There are 15 families remaining. It's in cartel control. And so this is just one small town. Nogales, I just took a group of mothers down there, our Moms for Carry uh, coalition. They wanted to see what was happening and how these people were ending up in places like New York City on buses or on, on airplanes with their free airline ticket and going all over the country. And we went down to Nogales where they process all these people and put them on buses. And this is a town that uh, tells me they're seeing people from all over the world, from Asia, from China, from Africa, and they're having trouble with, with the people who are just pouring onto the streets. They don't speak the language. They're, they don't know where to put them because it's a town of 22,000 people. They can't handle the influx. We are going to see Arizona forever changed because of this if we don't get serious and shut down this illegal activity and treat the cartels at the terrorist organizations that they are. Yeah. Carrie Lake, I want to take a short break and come back and ask you a little more about elections on January 6th. Stay with us. We're talking about Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And I am back with Arizona Senate candidate Carrie Lake. And Carrie, you've laid out all of these issues around the border, a very dangerous moment in time. But is this resonating on citizens there? Uh, you're running for the Senate right now. Can you win? Absolutely. I mean, the polling shows that it's a it's pretty much a dead heat right now. It looks like it's going to be a three way race. I'm running against a very radical Democrat named Ruben Gallego, and Kirsten Cinema is the incumbent. And she recently became an independent, which is comical because since she became an independent, she's voted with Joe Biden a hundred percent of the time. So the people in Arizona are recognizing these Democrat policies have done nothing to secure the border. They've done nothing except tear down our strong economy that President. 
President Trump had us uh, in. And, and they're recognizing that these are destructive policies and they want to change. They recognize that the people that have been in office, like Cinema and Gallego, have voted for open borders time and time again, have voted for the destruction of our energy sector, have voted for the uh, the uh, defunding of police that actually makes our streets less safe. So right. I think the people of Arizona are fed up and they're ready for a big change. And the the Senate majority will hinge on this seat. And I believe we can win it. And I think we can win it big. And of course, you are supporting President Trump. And every time he's mentioned, the mainstream media goes after him over January 6th. I want to get your opinion here because we're seeing new information about January 6th and the number of FBI informants who were in the crowd. Uh, and now we're seeing this terrible treatment by some people who were just in Washington, had nothing to do with it. What's your assessment there? It's terrible what happened. I mean, this to me is one of the great injustices in American history. We have people who are rotting in this D.C. prison. Uh, Jake Lang, he's been there almost three years. He's never had a trial. He's rotting in prison. He's just one of dozens upon dozens of people. And now we're starting to see this video pour out, the 40-plus thousand hours that Mike Johnson is finally putting out, and he needs to put all of it out quickly. And we're seeing the treatment that these people who were just there protesting, peacefully protesting. We saw a grandmother being thrown down a flight of stairs by Capitol Police. We're seeing people being beaten by Capitol Police. Now, we want to get to the bottom of it because we don't want American citizens held as political prisoners, and that's what we have right now. We've got to get to the bottom of this. The conditions inside that D.C. jail are medieval, and uh, we can't forget these men who are being held right now. They, they were uh, trespassing charges, and you're facing more than a year behind bars or eight years behind bars. Meanwhile, these pro-Hamas protesters who were uh, defacing uh, property like the White House and were in the Capitol got slapped on the wrist and all of their charges dropped. It doesn't make any sense. It's a two-tier level of justice, and the American people are wisening up to it. Yeah, and, and you also have uh, James Comer with me just a few moments ago talking about the weaponization, that they're getting stonewalled. The DOJ is, is playing politics and all of this. It's happening everywhere. You know, President Trump, I'm honored to have his endorsement in this, but he says it all the time. They're not really after me. They're after you. Right. I'm just standing in the way. Uh, Carrie Lake, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Arizona Thank Senate candidate Carrie Lake, thank you.